Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, today is All Saints Day, and so uh, I thought I would do a bit of show and tell. So I wanted to share something from one of the saints in my life, from uh, Eldon Lampy. Eldon Lampy is my grandfather, who passed away many years ago at the age of 91. And in his retirement years, he took on woodworking. That was his craft. That was his joy. I remember as a boy, um, watching him in his little tiny shop that he had in the basement of the house uh, in Hinsdale, Illinois. And he would make all sorts of different things. And it was his great joy, of course, to make things for his grandchildren. And so he made both me and my brother one of these. You know what this is? It's a shoe shine box. Does anybody use shoe shine boxes anymore? No. But more importantly, it was made with great love, great care, great tenderness. But as you can see by the look of it, it has been with me for quite some time and taken quite a bit of a beating. Um, apparently, I used it as a stand to reach when I was painting the house. There's lots of paint on there. I stood up there. The uh, actual footstool is a bit broken, and uh, it's a bit raggedy. And um, well, it's just not so great condition. Doesn't mean I don't love it any less and that it isn't valuable in my eyes. Right? So, this is something my grandpa, Eldon Lampy, made for me, and I cherish it deeply. And I'll get back to it in a little bit. And so, uh, our gospel reading today was the Beatitudes, a very uh, famous, very well-known portion of Scripture, where blessed are, and then Jesus goes on and lists all these odd and strange people that he calls blessed that he values, that he loves. It's the first extensive teaching Jesus does in the book of Matthew, the way Matthew records it. And it's not about his credentials. It's not about all the miracles that he had done. It's about, well, bringing attention to that which often doesn't. Blessed are the poor, the meek, the weak, those who mourn. Jesus is drawing our attention to the very things we so often don't. We tend to want to, as we talked about last week, pay attention to the miraculous things, the glory of God, and how great He is, and the miracles He did. But Jesus, with His very first teaching, tells us that's not what I want you to know. That's not what I want you to pay attention to. Pay attention to these different things, these really ordinary things. And they are quite ordinary. They're quite regular. To mourn, we're all probably here with a bit of mourning today. To be meek, to want justice and not have it, to struggle in life. The kingdom belongs to the ordinary, to the regular people. Not to the great and powerful, the mighty ones. Jesus' kingdom isn't here for those who got it all together, those who figured it out, those who walk easily with God. That's not who his kingdom is for. His kingdom's for those who struggle. Those who are ordinary have difficulties all along the way. Those who are poor in spirit. Those who mourn. Those who seek righteousness but don't get it. Those who try to be peacemakers in their families. These are the people Jesus works in and through. His kingdom is for the ordinary which is so different than what our society tells us. Everyone is a hero. Everyone should be remembered for their greatness. 
today as we spend some time remembering those who have passed. Maybe you've reflected into your funerals that you've been to recently. And at funerals, we uh, get to remember them in the best possible light. I love photo slideshows. I love obituaries. I love to hear the stories, the heart, the love that they had. How kind, how good they were. All the great things they did in small and ordinary ways, and yet sometimes in great and amazing ways. But that's not always how it is. Everyone is a hero, but everyone is ordinary. Because in the back recesses of our minds, while we celebrate the greatness of people when they pass, we can also remember their brokenness. And we remember our brokenness. Where we hurt. Where we don't do so well or we feel pretty darn ordinary and wonder how a God of the great and powerful could love us. I brought this box to remind me, sometimes I keep things in here. I used to, uh, since we moved here to Australia, it's been pretty empty. But I used to keep all sorts of things in here, kind of like a, a memory box. Anybody have a memory box at home? Things they put special mementos into, things that they want to remember. Maybe it's, a, for me, a ticket to the World Series of Chicago Cubs. Other things that we remember. I've got lots of different things that I, I want to remember. And there's a little thing which I thought I had in my pocket, but I don't. I must have put it down somewhere. That's why I should keep it in a box. Uh, but one of those things is another thing that my grandpa made. It's a little tiny cross. It's pretty ordinary, actually. It's not his best work that he's done. Actually, these were the, some of the last things. Oh, they have it back there. Okay. I knew I put it down somewhere. It's a pretty ordinary cross. And it was some of the last things that he made. And it was his heart to want to continue to make things. So it's just a little tiny cross. It's not perfect in any way. Uh, but it's something that I remember. And I hold on to dearly. We put these memories, these things, in this box. Full of triumphs, yes, but full of the ordinary life. So I wonder what have you put in your memory box? What are the things that you want to hold on to and remember today to keep close and safe? Are they great things, triumphs, moments of pride, of achievement, or are they pretty darn ordinary? Things no one else would know why they're important. I'm sure we all have different things that we would keep away, that just are special to us. This box reminds me of another thing today for us. It is pretty beat up. Not looking so great. But so is the church these days. The church isn't doing so great, if you hadn't noticed. We're closing down churches. We're struggling to find the next generation. And this is for a lot of Lutheran churches, but in the United States as well in Australia, it hits every denomination. The church isn't what it once was, the pristine, perfect 
thing, the attractive thing, the, the great thing that people marveled at and wanted to be a part of and wanted to love. But God still says, this is mine. God still loves his church. No matter how broken it looks, no matter how difficult it is, no matter what anyone says, he still loves his church, even the broken bits. And he, when you look in that church, and you look at all the ordinary things that make it up, the ordinary people, the broken, the sinful, the hurting, the mourning, the meek. And Jesus looks in there and he sees saints. He sees Jesus Christ's cross and he calls all of us saints. Even though we're ordinary, he calls us saints. The church is full of ordinary, but it's full of saints. I hope today that you can remember, as we remember the saints who have gone before us, who rest in Jesus now, that you too are a saint because Jesus calls you one. Because he says, even though you're ordinary and imperfect, I still think, because of Jesus' cross, you are mine.